Good morning. Happy Fourth of July weekend to all of you, and welcome to our service this morning at Living Hope Baptist Church. Uh, if anyone, anyone here is here for the first time, and you would, uh, uh, as our guest, we would ask you if you would fill out one of our visitors' cards that we may uh, uh, reciprocate to your visit and uh, uh, pay an acknowledgement to your uh, your time with us here this morning. So welcome. Uh, I know you think this is 4th of July weekend, but I want to share with you that today is Substitute Day. Um, and you say, what? Okay, first of all, you have a substitute making the announcements this morning. There's a substitute music director. There's a substitute sound man. And a substitute preacher. <laughs> is there any more substitute than that? Okay, we're glad that you are not, okay? And you're in your place where you need to be to worship this morning. A couple of things I need to remind you about and acknowledge that about tonight, tonight's evening service, one more time at when? Five, five o'clock, okay, five o'clock. And uh, afterwards there will be hamburgers and hot dogs at 4th of July celebration. And we encourage you to attend that, be with us, and, uh, and bring a little potluck dish so that uh, you can share your favorite dish on the 4th of July, okay? Also, we're uh, giving the hospitality uh, group a break for a couple of months. So we've had our last Wednesday night meal uh, for the summer. they will take July and August off and be back to work in September, okay? All the other Wednesday night activities are still the same, okay? And one other thing I need to ask your uh, attention to and request your help with. Uh, our guy, everybody knows Ralph, right? Yes. Ralph, okay, Ralph's right over here. Where are you going, Ralph? Okay, Ralph needs a little help. Uh, Ralph's been approved for therapy for his back, and uh, he's got authorization to get rides for that. But he also needs help to get to the gym, and uh, uh, as he goes there a couple, three times a week, okay? Uh, the pool helps his back, the, and, the, and he'll get some instructions for some therapy, but we need some help for that. We're asking the deacons help, but if anybody else uh, can help with that, just a little short trip over to San Jacinto, uh, we'd certainly appreciate it. If you'd see Jim Swims about that, he's the author and finisher and originator of that little problem. Okay. All right. All right. okay, let's go to prayer this morning and then we'll begin our worship service. Right, Danny? Yes, sir. Okay. Father, this morning we just thank you and appreciate you. And Father, love you uh, so much. Father, as we uh, are here this weekend again to celebrate our country's birthday, Father, we just thank you uh, immensely for what you have done uh, in the formation and creation and Father in the blessings of this wonderful nation. Father, thank you again. Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came and died for us. Father, who we acknowledge as our eternal Savior. Now, Father, I would ask that you would be with our Pastor Rick as uh, he and his family returns this week. Father, we just pray that, that uh, you'll be uh, with him in his travels. Thank you for the opportunity he's had to get a good vacation and good rest. Father, be with our service as we uh, as we celebrate. Father, as we uh, worship you, as you are the center of what's going on, we thank you for your presence with us. With Pastor Kirk, as he brings the message this morning, Father, may, may you uh, speak to him and give him the words and encouragement that we may be hearers, oh, not only, but doers also of the word. So lead guide and direct this morning, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Well, well. It's been a while. It's been a while. 634, all of you know it. My country says the thing. And on this first, uh, let's stand, please. All right.
pledge allegiance to America. Here we go. Uh, Doctor, God bless America. Uh, for three, four, God.
pray that your spirit would talk to us and, and connect our hearts to what we need to do for you. And I ask your blessing upon this offering that we use it to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
<laughs> I will one day. All right. Well, it's good to see everybody here this morning on uh, Fourth of July weekend, and I'm not sure if what he said. What, what did he call us? Substitute. Substitute. I think we're just the people that didn't have anywhere to go. <laughs> we're all the, we're just all the people that were the leftovers. Okay. Uh, but we're we're here, and uh, I'm glad to be here in the house of the Lord on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. How many of you enjoy this morning already? Thank you. Yeah, I enjoy it already. I appreciate that. And, uh, I like the uh, I like our offertory was excellent this morning. The choir is excellent. I told uh, Sister behind me here that uh, I thought the choir was excellent. You guys have an excellent choir. Excellent choir. And uh, as you know, most of you know, we're working on a merger here, and I think that's one thing that's going to be a lot better, because we're going to have 30 or 40 in the choir instead of 15 or 20. And so I think we have 17 or 18 in the choir this morning, so they have 35, 40 in the choir. It's just, it's just exciting, you know? And uh, But I thought it was great today already. I really appreciate that, and Danny did a great job uh, with everything. I want to ask if you take your Bible turn to Matthew chapter 21 this morning. And I'm sorry I missed last Sunday. I was supposed to preach. I got the flu. We had a boy from our church who was seven years old come over to my house and play with my son who was seven years old. And they just played all the day and I wasn't there most of the time. But I came home and the little boy kept running in the bathroom. The seven-year-old boy. And I just asked him when we were leaving. I said, are you feeling okay? And he said, well, I'm very not feeling sick, but I didn't want to stop playing. <laughs> I said, okay. I didn't think anything of it. I thought it's hot outside. You know, it's hot. I thought maybe they were just hot, you know. And uh, I took him home, him and, and my son. We took him home. He lived a few blocks away. And we took him home, and I mean this. He got out of the car, walked towards his house, he started vomiting. Oh. And I thought... This is not a good sign. <laughs> so he went into the house, and I didn't think anything of it. That was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe 3, something like that. I came to the church this, that night, Saturday, to work. I was working in the evening times. Went home. About 7 o'clock, I got violently sick. I mean, I was so sick, it was terrible. So, if you want a weight loss program, <laughs> I lost 11 pounds oh. in two and a half days. But it's not the way you want to lose weight. But you are happy. I promise you're happy that I wasn't here last Sunday. You would not have been good. I did actually get up Sunday morning, get dressed, and attempt to come. And my wife saw this goes, you are not going to church. She said, you have people that can do it. And I was like, okay. Um, if you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 21, I don't know how you do things, so I'm just going to do this. I hope it's okay. If you can stand with me together this morning as we read the Word of God, and our church always reads together. And it's like, so I said, one time I didn't have people stand. The lady said to me, Pastor, you guys, you don't have respect for God. You don't stand up. And I just said to her, I said, when you're at home reading your Bible, do you stand and read it? Or... <laughs> She's like, no. And I said, well, it's okay if we don't stand. It's not like against the law. But we're just standing, okay? So Matthew chapter 21, I'd like for us to read. Uh, I want you to read with me, if you will, from verse 1 um, down to about verse, uh, let's look down to about verse 12, if you will. And uh, I'm going to do, we'll do response. I'll read a verse, the first verse you read with me, the second verse all together, and, I'll read the, and so on. It'll take about four minutes. Let's read. I'll read verse 1, please. And when they drew nigh to Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage under the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, Say, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a coal of her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. All, All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. 
And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass, and the colt put on them their clothes, and they sat him thereon. And very great multitudes spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold to us. Let's have a word of prayer and, uh, and then we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. I pray that you would strengthen every person that's in this room today. I pray, Lord, if there's anybody here that's a non-believer, that today would be the day of their salvation. We pray, Lord, that the Word of God would do a great work in the hearts and the minds of every person. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here today that their life is broken. Maybe they're away from God. Maybe they're in a time of desperation. Lord, we don't know what people are going through. I pray, Lord, that they would be encouraged, strengthened, and renewed, ready to serve God in the future. Lord, bless us. We need you in this place. We pray that the Spirit of God will move. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want to just take a few moments this morning and uh, go over some things with you from Matthew chapter 21. This isn't necessarily what you would call a patriotic message in any way, and, um, but I do believe it would be a message that would be helpful to you and be an encouragement to you in your life. My wife and I had the opportunity two years ago to go to Hawaii. How many of you have been to Hawaii before? If you've ever gone, it's a beautiful place. And it's just awesome. It's very, it's an enjoyable place. We had a blessing. We've got a friend of ours, and he's the right kind of friend. And he called me and said, Kirk, I'm going on vacation from Hawaii. I was like, excuse me? And he goes, I'm going on vacation for two weeks, so my condo on Waikiki Beach, on the top floor, on the ocean, will be open. No one will be staying there for two weeks. If you and your wife would like to use our condominium, you can stay there. And we're like, okay. <laughs> when can we go? And uh, we had a blessing because we had occurred a bunch of miles through Southwest, Southwest Airlines, so we had about $11 we paid for our trip to Hawaii. And we stayed in his condominium. I mean, it is top of the line. We, we walked in, we are like, we gotta be careful. White carpet, who has white carpet? You know? <laughs> white carpet, we don't, we have three kids. White carpet, white ca furniture, white couch. It was like unbelievable, you know, beautiful. And he says, oh, and while you're there, you can use my new Jaguar. It'll be in the, in the station, you know, where it picked kind of like as an elevator for the Jaguar. And I'll leave you the key, and you can just do whatever you want. You've got it made. You can stay there while I'm on, on vacation. Like, who goes on vacation in Hawaii anyway? I still can't figure that out. So we went on vacation there. We loved it. I had a friend, another pastor that I kind of know. He's not a close friend, but an acquaintance. And we had both been in Hawaii at the same time on Waikiki Beach. And he, I asked him, we got back, and I saw that he went at the same time. We didn't know we were there, but we were there. That makes sense to everybody? Yeah. And uh, he said to me, he said, uh, I said, well, what did you guys do? What did you do in Hawaii? He said, I took six books. I read them all from cover to cover. I didn't do anything. Uh, that's my vacation. I was like, wow. My wife and I did Everything. <laughs> you plan off this may be our one time in history to ever go to Hawaii. We don't know if we'll ever make it back again, you know? We went to the North Shore, went to the Diamond Head, we went swimming, we went everywhere to the, there's a palace there. We went to museums, I mean, we didn't stop. That was our vacation, that's us. But something happened while we were there that, it, I would say it injured our trip. Not really, but, you know, it does matter. 
President Obama was there for a week when we were there. Which is not a problem, except one day we went to, I still can't pronounce it, Hamanami Bay or something like that, <laughs> to go, I'm not saying it right, okay, to go scuba, scuba diving. And we got there, and I told we had planned, we're going to go early in the morning. We're going to go, at, you know, as early as we can get there when it opens. And we got there. And they said, the bay is closed today. Oh. We were like, what do you mean it's closed? Like, it's closed for the president and his family. And I was like, well, there's only two of us. <laughs> two more people is not that big a deal, you know. It's closed for the president and his family. You can't even come any closer. We were like, okay. We went somewhere else, and they had closed down the whole road and had a big, uh, I don't know how you would call it, uh, uh, a big, almost like a parade of, cars, limousines, and SUVs, and um, all kinds of uh, bodyguards, and people that were guarding and watching his family, and I mean, it was, he, when he went anywhere in Hawaii, it was the grand entrance everywhere he went. When I, my wife and I went somewhere in Hawaii, no one knew we were there. <laughs> so we were on different levels and different planes. But as we studied the Bible this morning, we read these 13 verses, we studied the scriptures and realized something about Jesus. I want you to notice that as we read these scriptures, that these scriptures, these verses are an event of Jesus coming into Jerusalem five short days before he goes to the cross. Some people that read these passages, chapter 21 and chapter 2, they put more weight on what Jesus says just because of the timing, because just in a few days, Jesus will go to the cross. When you look at these verses, I want you to notice a couple things about them. We will go through them. That everything that happens on the earth after this has two great, a great significance on two circumstances. The first circumstance is Jesus going to the cross. With Jesus going to the cross, the death of Christ on the cross, it must occur for salvation to happen. As a Christian, we do not believe that salvation could occur without Jesus going to the cross. It can't happen. He had to be perfect. He had to be pure. He had to be sinless. He had to be holy. And He had to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Secondly, the resurrection of Christ had to occur. The resurrection of Christ shows not only that Jesus Christ died and paid for our sins, but that the sacrifice of Jesus was accepted by God the Father. Without the death of Christ, there is no remission of sin. Without the resurrection of Christ, there is no acceptance of the sacrifice. Jesus Christ had to die, and He had to be risen again. Is that correct, everybody? Amen. And if we look at the Scriptures, a couple of things that I want you to notice, that Jesus Christ came to the world on purpose. The Bible says He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him to, then gave He power to become the sons of God. Amen. Jesus Christ came to earth on purpose. Nothing about Jesus is an accident. Nothing about His life is an accident. Everything that was done in Him and through Him was on purpose. Jesus often said I, that He sought to do the will of the Father. Not my will, but Thine. Speaking to God, Thy will be done. Jesus had to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Um, also, the resurrection showed that God accepted the sacrifice of Jesus and that Jesus truly is the Son of God. I want to make note of that. Jesus Christ is the Christ, the Messiah, the Christos, in the Greek, the Anointed One. Jesus Christ is everything that we need to be saved. He is, I love this song, He is our all in all. There's nothing that Jesus is that needs to be done outside of Jesus for us to be saved. What I mean by that, me being a pastor has no part in my salvation. Me following in baptism, although I believe in it, has no part of my salvation. Me being kind to people I, does not have any part of my salvation. All of my salvation is wrapped in Jesus and who He is and what He did. I love that song, Jesus paid it all. Have you ever heard that before? All to him I owe, sin and left a crimson stain, but he, anybody know the end of it? Washed it white as snow. Jesus Christ in himself contains the ability and the purpose of my salvation. Now, 
Now, to be saved, I trust in Him for my salvation, but I cannot work myself in a way to be saved. I have people ask me questions like this. Pastor Kirk Beard. Pastor Kirk, hey, how about this? How come sometimes these cults or these unbelieving groups have more workers doing work for their, what would you call it, their sect or their cult or their belief system more than Christians do? And I said, it's a simple question. It's a simple question. It's a simple answer. The difference is because we are not motivated to get to heaven, or we are not motivated to be saved through what we do. We are motiv motivated to do good works because we're saved. They do works to get saved. That makes sense to you? So it's easier to say, hey, if you do this for me, you might get saved. And you better do this too. And you better do this too. And you better give money to the church. And you better go out. And you better do this or you're not going to make it. Well, you know what? That's a motivator. But it's not, it's not the answer to the problem. Jesus Christ paid for our sins. He is salvation himself. All right, would you look at something with me, if you will? Matthew chapter 21. Notice again, five days before Christ. And I wanted you to notice something else about this. These five days before Christ. The Passover is on the 14th day of month. You may have gone over this on uh, your path. If you talk about Palm Sunday or had that. But um, this, is the, this is the tenth day. So just five days from now, Jesus Christ will be taken. The Passover is celebrated in the Old Testament and talks about it in Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. I'm not going to go over that today uh, just to make this, this message more brief. But just to say that it is, coincides with the Passover of Jesus Christ and going to the cross. This Beth Bethphage, this place that we met, we just read about, is a few miles from Jerusalem. It's like a staging place for the purpose of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. It's a staging area, a preparation area. I don't know if you've ever been to the Rose Bowl or a great parade, and they had this staging area where they had all the floats getting ready and prepared for the great uh, parade or for the entrance. And when Jesus went to this Bethphage with his disciples, sent two ahead of him said, I'm going to be in Jerusalem. And I want you to prepare it for my coming or for my entrance. I want you to notice something else about Jesus. Notice that his, it was no great entrance. Now, I just talked to you about our president. Our president, whenever he went anywhere with his family in Hawaii, I mean, they closed, they shut traffic down. They closed tourist attractions down. I mean, when he went anywhere, it was made known, the president is coming. Watch out. Get ready. The president's coming. They didn't care who was offended. They didn't care who was upset. You be quiet. You sit down. You wait. You be patient. The president is coming. Notice that. But notice that Jesus Christ had not so great an entrance. It would actually be the opposite. It was not so grand. Notice that there were no char chariots. Jesus didn't ride out a chariot into Jerusalem. Notice there weren't trumpets lining the sidelines when Jesus entered. Although I think that's what would have been great if Jesus would have come on a chariot or had trumpets down the sides. And when he entered, it would have had a great, and a great entrance. But that wasn't how Jesus came. Notice in the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 18 and verse 10, it talks about Jesus. And it talks about, the, actually it talks about the Messiah, the Lord. And it talks about how that he could ride the cherubs. I'll tell you what, if Jesus wanted to arrive in Jerusalem in a grand way, he could have ridden on an angel into Jerusalem. Now I'll tell you what, that would have been a grand entrance. Would you agree with me on that? <laughs> Jesus could have uh, ridden that way. But no, Jesus chose to ride on a donkey. Which isn't so grand. It wasn't even a horse. It wasn't even an expensive course. Uh, we were able to go to Lexington, Kentucky this past year. Uh, and I took my son with me to speak at a school there, a college. And uh, we, we took a tour of these of the, these horse farms. And they said, this horse was cost one point something something million dollars. This horse cost two point something something million dollars. This horse has won this many millions of dollars in person. And this horse, I'm like, wow, this is unbelievable. You know, it wouldn't have been wrong for Jesus to ride an expensive, beautiful horse into Jerusalem. But he didn't ride a horse. He doesn't ride on a chariot. He doesn't ride in a great... He comes on a donkey. And I'm going to make it worse. It's not even his own. He borrowed it. I mean, he borrowed the donkey... He doesn't, even, he, doesn't have, he doesn't have anything. He borrows a donkey. He's, it is lowly. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem is very humble. But notice, to the T, to the minute iota, every prophecy of the Old Testament is fulfilled 
in Jesus Christ. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9 speaks of, speaks of this in the Messiah. Jesus Christ, I want you to notice something this morning if you will look with me. In verse 5, is telling you the daughters of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek. Notice the words, the king cometh. I want you to notice something. Would you look with me at verse 9, if you will, the same scripture, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 9. It says, and the multitudes that went before that and that followed Christ, saying, notice the words, Hosanna. To the Son of David. Notice, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I wanted you to see those. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Son of David, the Davidic throne. They're saying he is the King. Jesus Christ is the King. And I want you to know something. That Jesus Christ is the King. Amen. I know we live in a world right now where Jesus Christ is not exalted as he should. But I want you to understand something that as a Christian, as a Bible believer, we know that Jesus Christ is the King. <laughs> and He is not only a King, as some try to crown Him a King in the Bible, but being a King is not sufficient enough for Jesus. Jesus is not just a, a good man or a good prophet or another King. He is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Savior, our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ is the King. In John chapter 19 and verse 14, Pilate proclaimed Jesus the King of the Jews. And in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1, it talks about Jesus Christ. He is sitting on the throne and He's high and He's lifted up. Jesus Christ is high and lifted up. He is holy. He is not like everybody else. The Bible says about Jesus Christ that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Amen. You look at your Bible, if you will, if you look with me down at verse 9 now. Matthew chapter 21. And the multitudes that went before and that followed Christ saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Notice verse 10. I love this verse. But you'll miss it. It says, And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved. I want to stop and make a statement about that. I want you to understand something, that when you bring Jesus into a situation, or you bring the name of Jesus up, everybody's moved. <laughs> Everybody is moved in one way or the other. Some will move towards Jesus. Some will receive that. I don't know about you, but if you've ever presented the gospel to anybody or share the gospel, you'll have a number of different responses. Some people will say, wow, wonderful. I, I would like to know Jesus Christ. I'd like to know Him as my Savior. Others will respond in a negative way. Or even, maybe in some extreme circumstances with repulsion. Don't bring that name up to me. I know in the past few weeks in Florida, there was a ch small church there. and The church was in, in, in Florida there. He, the pastor did something pretty interesting. He, he, you could advertise on the bus benches and you could have them painted and decorated in a way to advertise your company. So, like in our town, the, you know, we had a, the, you know, where you sit, wait for the bus stop and you'd have the bench there and it would say, they would have painted on it, Pizza Hut. Or Carl's Jr. Or, you know, a gas station, you know, come, come buy gas from us, whatever, you know. So a pastor went through and on the main drag on town bought all the benches to advertise on for a year. I don't know if you saw this. And he had painted on there, Jesus. Nothing else. Just the word Jesus. And a great uproar came out through the community and they were upset. They said, they said you can't rent benches and write the name of Jesus. You're not allowed to do that. And the company called him and said, next year, you won't be allowed to rent and do that again and put the name of Jesus. He said, well, can I put this? He mentioned other things. Can I put this name? Can I do this? They said, yeah, you can do that. As long as it's not the name of Jesus. And I want you to understand something. When we talk about Jesus and we talk about him, people are moved. They're either moved toward Jesus or they're moved away from Jesus. Jesus is a Amen. difference maker. Amen. We have these groups, and I won't be political for long this morning, but we have these groups in America, 
these ACLU and other groups, and it seems like you can talk about anything and say anything but Jesus. We can lift up any deity or anybody else we want, and, and that's just fine. But if you lift up Jesus, hey, it's a problem. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus makes a difference. When people hear the name of Jesus, they are moved. And verse 10 says, And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. And the question is, and I want you to notice, it says, Who is this? Who is this? Very interesting question, isn't it? I want you to look at verse 11. The multitude said, so this, so some people ask, who is this? But the multitude, the big crowd said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth in Galilee. Notice that, number one, I wanted you to notice that even though a lot of people have heard the name of Jesus and know who he is, that there are still some out there that still don't know who he is. Amen. Right. And you may think, well, bro, uh, Pastor Kirk, and, um, man, I mean, we've got churches on every corner, and we've got Bibles that are given out frequently, and the, on the internet, there's, there's, there's things about Jesus and God and Christianity, but you mean there's still people that haven't heard? I'm telling you today, as a pastor, before you, I have met hundreds and thousands of people in my lifetime, personally, who do not know who Jesus is. Let me just tell you a, a quick, a brief story. Today we have a we had a young man attend our church who went to Vanderbilt University. He got a full ride scholarship. He's a wonderful, phenomenal musician. By the way, he's played concerts in this building before. His family are are Buddhists. So he goes to Vanderbilt University. By the way, he's best friends with the guy that attends our church and plays the piano for us. Son, we witnessed to him. He's never wanted me part of the gospel. He goes to Vanderbilt University, goes to college, and a Baptist church there meets him. He comes to church, Baptist church, received Christ as a Savior, follows in baptism, going to discipleship, growing in the Lord. The pastor from, from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, calls me and says, Pastor Kirk, I'm like, I don't know who you are. He goes, do you know this guy? He said his name. I go, well, yeah, I know him. How do you know him? He goes, well, he's been attending our church and got saved. I said, really? He goes, he's coming back to him at, for the summer. Can you get him in church? So our young adult, uh, youth, uh, young adult pastor went by and visited him. Remember? He was in church today. Amen. So here's a guy from him, played in this church, has done all these concerts, but he had to go to Tennessee to get saved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? So if you think, well, everybody's heard about Jesus, everybody knows. Everybody doesn't know. It's up to us to tell who Jesus is. But I want you to notice something. I want you to see the end of the verse. I want you to look at, I believe it's verse 11. I want you to notice, uh, no, it's verse 10. Notice that the multitude, even though they knew who Jesus was, didn't have it right. And you may say, Pastor Beard, you're, you're splitting hairs here. Let me show you. And verse 10, it says, And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And it is verse 11. And the multitude said, This is Jesus. What does it say? The what? The prophet of Wait a minute. Nazareth. Wait a minute. The prophet. Of Nazareth of Galilee. Now, when I know Jesus, I know Jesus as the Son of God. How about you? Amen. Right. I know Jesus as the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ is not just another prophet. Amen. I have my neighbors, my friends of mine are neighbors, and they are um, they, they are Muslim. And they go they invite us over. And my one recently we went there and we had eleven uh, surgeons were there Whoa. at a birthday party. <laughs> All their friends. My son and I ran. My son's a good, good young man, at least today. <laughs> He's 15 years old. And there's different rooms. There's the man room, and then there's the woman room, and then there's a the kid's play they go outside. So my son, of course, he's a young man. We didn't think about it. He just went with me, and we sat with the doctors. And they brought up to me about, what do you do? And I said, do you really want to know? They said, yes, we want to know what you do. I said, well, I'm a Baptist preacher. <laughs> well, that really hit it off. You know? <laughs> Great. Tell us 
about this Baptist. I said, I will tell you about this Baptist. <laughs> and I began to tell them about Jesus Christ. And be a witness to them. Very, but I wasn't aggressive or angry or nice, and they were nice and very kind. It was a good opportunity to give the gospel. They came up to me afterward and they didn't say anything about going to church or God. But the one thing they did say to me was, your son, he is a man. You have raised him well. He should be a surgeon. <laughs> I don't know about that. Whatever God wants him to be, you know. But it was interesting. I just wanted you to know that Jesus Christ isn't just another prophet. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Savior of this world. He's everything that you and I. Look at, look at everything that we have is because Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid for our sins. I'm almost Amen. Finished. Notice the response of the multitude. If you would, I wrote briefly here. If you look at verse 12, that Jesus went to the temple of God and cast out all the, that sold and brought. Now, I don't want to get that far yet, but that's good. By the way, oh, this is good. This isn't part of the sermon. This is great. You want to hear it? Yeah. Notice that Jesus Christ is the king, but he didn't go to the palace. Where did he go? He went to the temple, went to church. Because he didn't come to build an earthly kingdom. He came to build a spiritual kingdom, a heavenly kingdom. The kingdom of God. Isn't that awesome? That's not in the notes. That's free. Anyway. But if you look back, I want you, you to notice a couple of things. How the response to the crowd. Two things. They laid garments down. As Jesus came in, they put garments down. Almost like a how would you say a last minute way to decorate the preparation for Jesus? They took off their robes. They took off their jackets. They're beautiful. And they hung them. They draped them over the walls. And everything. Jesus come. What are we going to do? we got to make it look good. What are we going to do? Take off our robe. Put them down. Make it look good. What are we going to do? How are we going to prepare the way of the Lord? Oh, let's cut down the palm trees. Let's put them down. They did everything they could to, make, to let Jesus know they appreciated him and who he was. Notice. The words Hosanna, praising the name of the Lord. By the way, don't ever be afraid to praise the name of the Lord, especially in church. To raise up and glorify the Lord, there's nothing wrong with it. Amen. I'm not a real vocal person in church. I'm just not. When I'm listening, I'm just not. It's just me. But I teach our church, don't be offended if somebody else is. If somebody's different than you, that's okay. Isn't that right? Is that okay? Amen. I've seen some people that raise their hand like that. You know, like, glory to God. I'm okay with it. It doesn't bother me. I hope it doesn't bother you. It talks somewhere about lifting up holy hands of the Lord. But I, I'm not real vocal on it, but I'm okay if you are. Amen? Amen, okay. Amen Pastor. All right, good. Notice that all were moved. We talk about that. But notice some didn't know who he was, but notice that the multitude knew mostly who he was. It's up to us as Christians to proclaim the name of the Lord. All I want you to realize today, I'm finished. All I want you to realize today, when you leave, Jesus Christ is the King of kings, the Lord of the Lord, the Savior of this world. When you get down, when you watch the news, and you see all the negative, and the broken, and the bitter, the hurting people, understand that Jesus Christ is King. He's on the throne. Everything's going to be okay. And that He is not only the author, but He is our, the finisher of our faith. We have a great Savior. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Can we have a word of prayer this morning? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today again. Lord, we thank you for the time we have to open your word and study it. I pray that, Lord, that we would continue to be strengthened and encouraged by your words. Lord, I pray that you can uh, work in the hearts and lives of every person here today. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness to us. You've been so gracious and merciful to us. We pray that you continue to work in our hearts and our lives. Let's all stand together as a church family. And I think Danny's going to come. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to do something. All right? Let's all stand.